Hello Internet. I like playing tower defense games, but there is one game that I adore playing. I really, really like Bloon's tower defense. No. In fact, I am in love with Bloon's tower defense. You probably heard about this game. It's a tower defense game where you defend against balloons. The cool thing about the game is that the enemies themselves, instead of having a health bar like most enemies in tower defense games, balloons show their health visually based on color, material, and size. The first time I played BTD or Balloon Star Defense was somewhere between 2010 and 2011, where I visited a random Flash website for Flash games, and some of the games that showed up was a game called BTD4. I thought it was one of the more decent games on out there, but however, a few moments later, a company by the name of Ninja Kiwi, the guys who made these balloon games, has released their greatest title yet, Balloon's Tower Defense 5. It had everything. It changed the entire BTD franchise and basically remastered the already good BTD4 title. It was basically perfect. You had co-op. You had about like 1 billion maps to choose from. You had 20 monkeys and each of them have 8 upgrades instead of 4. And you had new camo and new regrow balloons. And of course the big fucking so my god. The biggest balloon in the series. I cannot count how many hours I spent on BTD5. And yes, the game is really good. I'll be honest here, I wasn't really good at the game, but the most important thing to me is fun. So I really really had a lot of fun with BTD5, compared to the previous title. But anyway, because of BTD5's success, Ninja Kiwi released their next title, which was BTD Battles. Sure, you could argue that BTD5 had multiplayer like co-op, but it didn't have versus mode, and thus they made this game. Hey guys, Future Henry here. I just want to say something. I really wanted to record the Flash version of the game, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a match. It was probably because the game is dead at this point, but thankfully there is a new version of the game which is on Steam, so I'll have to record that instead. And what can you do in BTD Battles? Well, it's basically BTD5, but you're basically trying to defeat the opponent before they defeat you. You can send off balloons to the enemy screen and gain income while you do it. There is also other ways to play, like defense mode which sucks and card battle which is cool but I don't understand why nobody plays it. While I hate the pay to win aspect of the game, it's still enjoyable and I really like the game. Also, here's a fun footage of me stealing this guy's 1000 medallions so I can buy all the upgrades for my monkeys. Thank you Ninja Kiwi, very cool. Anyway, the BTD games were getting popularity and because of that Ninja Kiwi released their third BTD5 game and that was Bloons Monkey City. In BMC you can create your own town but however you need to expand. To expand you need to attack balloons that are in the occupied area. When you occupy the area you expand your city walls to place buildings. Buildings can help you get more monkeys and upgrades. And oh yeah, did I mention that you can also attack other players with balloons as well? There's also a contested territory event where you have to survive as long as possible to claim the territory and get even extra money. And they added a new mob class balloon, which are DDTs. DDTs are very scary because they have a lead and camel protection. While it's true that they have similar health to BFBs, they're really really fast and can end your game really quickly! Why am I why am I doing that? Anyway, speaking of new balloons, Balloons Monkey City also introduced boss balloons, which are basically blimps that have a lot of health. Wow, super original ninja kiwi. Anyway, that's Balloons Monkey City. Yeah. The year is 2015, and it's the time that Flash is starting to slowly die. Flash has limitations which were the 30 FPS limit and performance issues, but the true issue why Flash is going away is because of security issues. So Ninja Kiwi had to do something about this, so they remastered all of these free games and put them all on Steam. I won't talk about what they did to the ports, but basically there are some ports I like and some I don't. But generally they did an okay job on all of them. This also let them port the games on mobile, making them more accessible on the go. Anyways, you might be wondering, why am I telling you all of this? And you may be also asking, isn't this video supposed to be about the entirely different game? Well. Yes, but you have to understand that back in the day, nobody expected that something as good as this game could be better than an already perfect game.
Before we continue the video, today's sponsor is The Colorful Creature. It's a game I've made. And it's a platformer where you have to change color in order to progress. There's 200 levels, level editor, endless run, challenges, customizable skins and hats, a local multiplayer, and more. If you want to try the free version of the game, there is a Steam demo that you can try in the link in the description. Anyways, let's continue with the video. Welcome to BTD6. BTD6 is the most recent BTD game, and probably the best of all of them. And I'll agree that the game, when initially launched, I don't think it was the greatest BTD5 in terms of content. However, due to amazing updates that Ninja Kiwi brought to us, I can happily say that BTD6 is the best tower defense game ever made. Period. Welcome to update 15.0 for Bloons Titan. Now this is how I exactly feel when I'm making a YouTube video. So what does BTD6 include that 5 does not? Well, we have a lot of the old monkeys back, but instead of 8 upgrades that each monkey has, now they have 15 upgrades. 15 upgrades, and there's also cross pathing. How do you balance a game that has 15 upgrades with free paths and you can do also cross pathing? I'm not being sarcastic, this is actually truly awesome that Ninja Kiwi put a lot of time and effort in this game. I'm actually very happy that Ninja Kiwi didn't turn BTD6 into a BTD5 knockoff. And I'm really, really happy about the Ninja Kiwi's work and what they've done for the game. So anyway, you can pick only two paths for each individual monkey and one path to upgrade all the way through to tier 5. Tier 5 monkeys are the best upgrades for the monkey in the game. Previously, the highest tier in BTD5 sometimes wasn't worth it, like with the glue gunner or ice monkey. But BTD6 manages to balance those things, even with more upgrades. For example, in BTD5, the glue gunner was bad because it couldn't do shit against Moabs. Like, glue gunners couldn't slow down the big blimps or something at all. Well, in BTD6, you can now buy a Moab glue to slow them down. The Ice Monkey 500 can now deal damage to Moabs as well, making them weak against all other attacks. Oh yeah, I haven't talked about the Wizard. If you've ever played BTD5, the Wizard Monkey in the game was T.O.P. Because it could use Lightning Bolt upgrade which was ridiculous and had ridiculous pierce and it could damage lead balloons. It also had camo detection upgrade called Monkey Sense which made the tower one of the most powerful cheap towers in the game. To prove it even more, everyone uses the fucking wizard in BTD battles, and that's just rigged. But in BTD6, the wizard monkey was balanced by entirely removing the lightning upgrade. Yes, the wizard monkey is weaker, but it's still a good monkey. And they basically split the BTD5 wizard into two towers in BTD6, the wizard and the druid. There are obviously new monkeys in the game, the druid and the alchemist. The druid, to be honest, kind of sucks, he just blows the balloons, just like in BTD5 wizard monkey. And the Alchemist is actually one of the best towers in the game because it buffs other monkeys by giving them potions. It also has this crazy upgrade that turns lead into gold and turns big blimps into red balloons, which is actually hilarious to see. And Ninja Kiwi added heroes which level up themselves and they get more powerful over time. Let's go back to the Wizard Monkey. Ninja Kiwi added a new balloon, which is a purple balloon. A purple balloon is immune to plasma, fire and magic. And guess what kind of attack does a wizard monkey have? It has magic. So therefore, if you solo with a wizard, you cannot beat purple balloons. It's literally impossible. But I think that's good in BTD6 to restrict those towers. Because then the game encourages diversity, which gives the game more strategy value compared to BTD5. There's also a lot of cool ways to beat the game. Look, you're just looking at my stream footage of me beating the game with only dark monkeys. So as long as you know how you're using your towers, you can win. And one final thing with towers, there's a 3D objects on certain maps. What I mean is, basically, for example, a sniper cannot see through this tree stump in this map. Unlike BTD5, snipers in that game can shoot everywhere, but in BTD6, depth matters. And I could just show you that by putting a sniper on top of this tree stump, it lets my sniper see through the entire map. And the feature of obstacles also makes towers like the helicopter and the mortar more useful because their projectiles do not get blocked by objects. Again, this game promotes diversity and I like it. But I don't like diversity in real life. A 
I suck his dick with a smile. That's a terrible joke. I know. Anyways, the game has game modes, just like BTD5, but of course, the BTD6 has new ones. I will only talk about BTD6 game modes in this video. Totally not because I want to increase my watch time. One of the new game modes are primary, military, and magic only game modes. It's self-explanatory, you're limited to a certain category of monkeys. They're not that hard. There's double HP Moab's game mode, which again explains itself. All of the blimps have double the health. And then there's half cash. Oh boy. You have no idea how much times I've died over and over and over again on this fucking game mode. I was also forced to be a pussy and use towers and even buy continues for this shit. Until I figured out a legendary strategy. And that strategy is called saving your fucking money. Wow, a true Serbian simulator. <laughs> This way, you can actually purchase Warframe towers and upgrades, so you don't have to end up like an average mapper in the mapping community. Alternativa pasaules nākotne cetridesmitais daļa. Lol. Not gonna lie. That was cringe, bro. Oh, and don't ever buy a banana farm in this game mode, it's literally gonna kill you. There's alternate balloons rounds, which is a game mode that changes all the rounds. They're usually more difficult and require more skill. For example, lead and chem balloons appear way earlier and rounds are generally pretty harder. But overall it's not that big of a deal if you relearn hard rounds. And finally, chimps. Oh, you don't know what chimps is? Well, alright, I'll explain it to you. No continues, no hearts lost, no income, no monkey knowledge, no powers, and no selling. And oh yeah, you get to play 100 rounds, and oh yeah, you will die over and over and over again. This is truly the hardest difficulty in the entire game. There's nothing harder than that, but except, I have to tell you the truth. All these game modes are not real difficulties, instead it is actually the maps themselves that the game contains. Currently, Bloons Tower Defense 6 has 58 maps, which are categorized as beginner, intermediate, advanced and expert difficulties, and you can pretty much see where I'm going with this. Imagine playing Inferno, which is an expert map on chimps or half cash. You literally don't have any place for monkeys on this map. Or how about a map with four paths that is almost impossible to defend? But almost is only almost, because people have actually been these near impossible challenges, and there's actually a community that is determined to do them, and I think that the community itself values the game so much. And finally with maps, there's a secret map in the challenge editor, and you can find it, and it's called balloons as a joke. This is an actual map in the game, and it's literally a corner map. Oh yeah, speaking of challenge editor, you can make your own challenges. BTD5 had daily challenges and special missions, but BTD6 lets you make stuff at bees. You can modify what maps you want to play with, how fast and strong the balloons can be, restrictions to monkeys, upgrades, customizable lives, cash, starting and running rounds, etc. What I really wish Ninja Kibit could add is the ability to make custom rounds and maps. I know it seems like a difficult task, but considering that BTD4 had a clone of a custom map making, Ninja Kiwi could probably port that as well on BTD6. BTD6 is a very alive game because of the updates they bring, and in the most recent update they brought the boss balloon by the name of Lich, or Lich, I don't know how you say it. A new Paragon monkey, a new map, and a lot of balance changes. I'm glad that it's not like with BTD5 where you have to wait a season for a new map. They're adding actual content to the game and I'm really happy about that. And generally it's more refreshing and new. I think that BTD6 is truly one of the best tower defense games ever and I believe that BTD6 will stick around for a long time. If you're looking for YouTubers who are making BTD6 content, I highly recommend Isab as the number one most interesting YouTuber for the game. Aliens Rock and Super Jump Bombo can be a second pick, but never ever choose to watch a YouTuber who is trying to use BTD6 for views. Wait, what is that? Guys, there's something that's in the window. Something's in the window and I don't know what it is, guys. I don't break your fucking legs, you little prick! Round 16 E rush. It got a little sus. 
had to tower boost because he started to adjust. Now, before we end the video, I want to talk about the sequel of BTD Bells. BTD Bells 2. BTD Bells 2 was announced by Ninja Kiwi this year, and the game isn't out yet as of making this video. But I am extremely excited for this game. They said that it won't be as pay to win as the first game, and that they will make it a lot more skill balanced. And the best part of this game is that it's going to be free. So I'm really excited to try out this game, and I think it's going to have a good reputation as the first game. It's a it's about friendship and magic. Oh, friendship and magic. Totally not a child show, please. Come on. Dad, there's a real Dad, there's a really big fan base and they even have a they even have a convention in San there Diego a big that fan was like base full of homosexuals. Dad, they're not dude girls even um grown women even come to this thing. There's yeah, a huge fan base there's women. a huge it's fan acceptable for women because it's a show about fucking cartoon characters. Talking about love and fucking kiss and rainbows, sunshine, all that other shit. Hello guys, Future Henry here, and I wanna apologize for not uploading for over a month, and that is because I was very busy. I am trying to get a driver's license, and I have schoolwork, and I have to go to college next year. And all of this consumes my free time to work on videos and my games, so I apologize if you have to wait, but that will happen when I upload big videos. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Bye!